Welcome to Cook, Serve, Delicious 2 and my continuing attempts to do all the Chef for Hire events at all the restaurants and get a medal each time. I'm currently concentrating on Chinese food. Mainly because it's not one of my favourite restaurants so I'd rather get this restaurant out of the way so I can get back to doing the ones I find more enjoyable. As you can see on Shift 5 and Shift 9 I got silver medals, both times for making a silly mistake or in the case of shift number nine, two silly mistakes. However, this time we're going for shift number 10, which has beef wok dishes, fried rice, chow mein, egg drop soup, and corn on the cob. They call it something different, but it has 55% buzz, nine serving stations, soda and lemonade is the drinks, and the challenge being it has four holding stations, and I need to serve I need a holding station for the fried rice, one for the chow mein, one for the egg drop soup, and I can use one for the corn. But if I do, it means I won't have any space for any sides, which increases customer patience. So I will probably just do these three dishes as in holding stations and one side, probably the broccoli because it's the fastest one to do. At least that is the plan at the moment. I'd like to have a perfect day to get a gold medal, but as you've seen, I've already got two silver medals in this series for this restaurant. So, it doesn't take much for me to mess up and get a silver medal. Right. Yes, I've prepared the broccoli first, so I have a side as fast as possible while I try and figure out the keys for well not so much the keys the combinations of keys for chow mein and rice etc so I will do the corn on the cob on demand So far, so good. I'm sure that won't last long. And my sides aren't going to last too long because the amount of food I'm being forced to serve. Doesn't give my sides a great deal of chance to survive very long. And here comes a rush hour. and lots of chores apparently and there go my sides I right, will we'll do chow mein as a side Okay, there goes the egg drop soup. And I'm pretty much going to run out of rice in a second. Uh, beef sauce and beef. Six I can actually serve. Some corn there. Number five, we can start number seven. Broccoli sauce, pork, and onions. Number nine, number eight is a chore. Number one is that. Three and four are that. Number six, I can do some corn. Number five, I can do some lemonade. The term struggling springs to mind. And I'm now out of chow mein. I 
I think I've just run out of rice again. I'm a bit busy concentrating on all the chores they're gi currently giving me. Okay, I've caught up for the moment, but there is a rush hour coming up very shortly. And here come all the chores. Definitely must be a rush hour coming up very shortly. Oh, what do you know? I've run out of sides. What the heck? I don't know what I just did there, but that wasn't good. Oh, okay. Uh, number eight was the one I was going for. Spicy pork with broccoli. Number eight. Spicy beef with celery. Number six is next one to come play. Number nine is that. I don't know what I have or haven't got by the way of food. I've run out of chow mein, have I? Not really need to do this, but too late now. I've started, so I'll finish. Ah, uh, one, two, five. Corn for that. No wonder that felt busy. 82 combos. A nice perfect day. Which is surprising to me considering how busy that felt. A very pretty gold medal. I like my gold medal. And I have unlocked a very green restaurant booth. And that's it. That's all I unlocked. I was expecting more. Well, I wasn't expecting it, I was hoping for more. So let's go on to the emails. Here we go with the NAHPS lot 5267, Magic Lamp. Before rising flood levels caused, caused citizens to abandon the state of Georgia, this object was retrieved and donated to the NAHPS. Our top historians theorize it may be a magic lamp and believe that by interacting with it, the interactee will be granted an enhanced appetite and the ability to watch children's cartoons for hours on end. Yeah. There's a word for one of those. It's called a hookah. Or a hookah. Basically, it's for druggies. Sweet Dance Moves, page 12, Slithering Centrifuge. Okay, so this one is called the Slithering Centrifuge. First, do a quarter rotation with your wrist as you arc your back about 25 degrees to the lateral. Start with the right arm first. Then as you arc at the peak maximum, start transitioning your left arm like the November Sun move. Move it, but make it a subtle move. You don't want to telegraph your wicked spin turn too early. 
Now as your wrist makes contact with your left hip, give it a little shake and clench your buttocks upwards 10 degrees. For family or fun get-togethers, I reckon recommend no more than 10 degrees, but for dance clubs, feel free to go up to 30 degrees depending on your relationship status. Now bring it all home and transition to a New York shakedown if you're feeling up to it. Once you reset, start with a left arm and do it in verse style, adding a who lad shout, who laddie shout, if you're up to it. That's the slithering centrifuge. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd love to hear how it goes in practice. J. Javista, extension 8890. Yeah. I ain't doing that. Dancing is not my thing at the best of times, and that move, definitely not my thing. Okay, that was Chinese food shift number 10. And I'm going to move on to shift number 11 next, where thankfully there's no corn on the cob, just chicken and beef wok dishes, as well as three, three entrees I prepare in advance. So that should make life a bit easier, because I'll have space for two sides. But there again, it's going to be busier with 10 serving stations. But that's all for the future. As always, I hope you enjoyed, and hopefully I will see you down the road for more Chef for Hire events in Cook, Serve, Delicious 2. Cheerio!